welcome to the the fifth edition five it's pretty good don't you think we made it through five of these and they're yeah. still a vlog right not a podcast yeah we don't use the word podcast anymore perfect vlog <laughs> uh and we're trying we're trying new things based on feedback and uh and us running out of uh ideas in our brain <laughs> so we have to bring in other people nice uh so we have a guest today uh but once again i'm gord nuttle and this is i'm brian anderson and on the uh remotely we have brent ramos did i say that correctly you did well said good because i didn't even i didn't even check with you before which i probably should have as a professional vlogger <laughs> so something to improve and brent's on. expertise is in S A three sixty, which is what? I think we're here to learn what oh. that acronym is. Okay. There's so many acronyms. I think there's two parts to it. There's the S A, which okay. what do you think that stands for? I'm gonna get well, I kind of know, but search something. Oh, I thought you're gonna say something like super. Search. Super comes super from awesome. Super awesome. Super awesome 360. 360. So 360 view, holistic view. Yeah. Of, yeah. But yeah. it's probably not that. <laughs> All right, Brent. Well, what is it? You know, it's actually super advertising, and I'm trying to broker a deal where I can get it to be 720, so you actually go two times around instead of just 360. <laughs> but, but until that occurs, it's uh, search ads 360. Okay, uh, so why would someone want to use search ads 360? And 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 like GA, is there just a search ads without the 360? Good question. So yes, so it's. Search Ads 360, we'll just do SA 360, you know, so we don't have to keep saying that full amount full. But essentially it's a it's a layer that's on top of the engine, so like Google Ads and Microsoft, it's a management layer that offers enterprise offerings. Uh, so for the search marketers, it becomes a really important tool. Um, and then as we kind of get more into the data side of things and what you can do with it, it becomes even more crucial, uh, which we can talk about as we go on. But when you're first looking at the screen here, if you can imagine all of those search engines by itself, they become really cumbersome to be able to have to operate if you're if, if you're a marketer. Uh, by screen hopping, each one has its own UI. It's very cumbersome. By putting it all under a single management layer like FCA360, it just becomes easier. And you can also use Google algorithms against all of this content. So Google Ads, Microsoft, Yahoo, Baidu. There's a few, a few social engines in there that we can talk about as well. Uh, but essentially, it centralizes everything for optimization um, and management. So you're talking like the keyword management that you want to bid on and whatnot and, and be placed on beside. Yeah, yeah, keyword management, ad group, creation campaigns, bidding, bid algorithms, all of that becomes consolidated. Um, there's also a, a component behind all of this that we haven't really touched on yet, but the floodlight tag um, is a, another feature that SA360 operates off of. So the G tag is what's in the engines or the free versions themselves. When you come over to SA 360, you elevate that up to the floodlight tag. So that's another value prop that's kind of adjacent to the tool. But that's what it, it runs off of. But if I really like painful and mundane work, I could not get SA 360 and just do this individually on each of the search engines and then try to keep them in sync and then eventually go, geez, this is way too much work. I should get SA 360. Yes, absolutely. And you know, a lot of people do. So it just kind of depends on the size of the firm, the size of your portfolio. What you're trying to do your maturity with tech in general um but you can certainly stay in the free engines themselves and operate off the g tag and, and the microsoft tags and uh without ever having to go into the enterprise version of like sa360 but it just kind of depends on what makes sense we generally see people running about fifty thousand dollars a month in search spend when it starts to make sense because you run into scalability issues so in order to start scaling success there becomes this point where you start to need a, uh, a management platform to be able to, to continue to grow Okay, that makes sense. That sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. I, li I like efficiency tools. Your green socks at that. Well, side, I was yeah. just thinking uh, applications to green socks. Yeah. Okay. So. Are you, you're probably stuck in the free version right now, though, right? <laughs> Unless you're <laughs> definitely free. stuck in the free version. <laughs> I'm not at that level yet. Again, that's fictional, right? The fictional. green socks fictional are not real. Green socks. Not socks. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on to. Uh, Oh, there's a hashtag up here, search master. Oh yeah, man, forgot about that. Yeah, so if you're if you're hanging out on the social media platforms, you guys like hashtag search mastery and uh, let us know what you think. That's that was actually used in a lot of webinars 
previously over the past three years. But yeah, that's there if you want to tag us. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, good to know. Yeah, we can find more content. I'll, then. I'll mention that to my daughter tonight because she's all over TikTok. So we'll see if we can get something in there somehow, some way, whatever she does on that platform. So. So I'm sure it's a top trending hashtag, so it should be easy to find, you know. Right next to Taylor Swift, I'm sure. Okay, what are we looking at here? Um, yeah, so this is a, a great segue because in the previous slide, we were just kind of talking about the historic value props of like consolidation of efficiency uh, of SA360 and these platforms, but as the world kind of turns and the cookie, cookie apocalypse, as I like to refer to it, comes into into fruition, um, data becomes really important, right? If you're a storyteller and you're trying to consolidate these identities and tell a good story for your brand and reach, reach the right customers at the right time responsibly, data becomes more important. And that's where SA360 starts to kind of differ. This is a great quote we found um, that kind of describes the idea of like the importance of data as it, as it relates to the value of the data and the speed to that. And so when you think about that quote, um, the, both are incredibly important. Right, especially in, in the in the in the site of being able to optimize media and marketing in real time to talk to your most important customers, data and speed to activate upon that becomes crucial. And so when you start talking in these conversations about okay, what tools do I need? SA360 then starts to become and make more sense because it's just a more durable solution to be able to support that effort. Um, and so the conversation of SA becoming something just around efficiency for the tactical practitioner. Is starting to become more evolving into this idea of, uh, of optimizer and, and data ingester to be able to tell that story at, at scale. So does it prep the data for you that you would need for activation or do you need to still do that yourself? No, <laughs> so that's one thing it doesn't do. SA360 obviously is an optimizer best. I would say it's probably the world's best optimizer. So if you think about it that way, it's only going to be able to optimize against the, the um, integrity of the data that's coming into it. So any of that side of, of things that, that's coming into SA is going to be health business or agency side. Um, and that can be done through a lot of different ways depending on your, your firm. And that's you know usually held in the hands of business intelligence or data scientists or brand managers um, and probably a combination of a lot of different media folks as well. So like that combination of data points and business intelligence points is really where it needs to come together. But that's held outside as a separate exercise from SA360. Getting it into SA360 and then optimizing to it is where the tool comes into play. Okay. That was a mouthful, I know, but it's important to note. Um, but what you see here from that kind of perspective is and this is, comes from a lot of different uh, case studies that we've been running on, on the search side is when you're able to unify all of those da different data points and bring them into marketing, you start to see this kind of leveling of, al of alignment, of opportunity to investment. And so on the left-hand side, obviously, there's always this guess of like you're overspending or underspending consistently, trying to reach the customer that you know best in the split second of an auction, but you don't know for sure how valuable that client is. So if you're able to bring a business side voice into that auction of search, and you're able to attach these different identities, so now you know the value at auction, you start to align uh, that investment to opportunity. Um, and that's where we start to see the greenfield start to kind of arise because you're not being wasteful with the money, you're also being a better storyteller because you're talking to the right person with the right message. It's not an assumption anymore. We used to call this the assumption gap. Um, of this like big hurdle of media people trying to jump the assumption gap by bringing in known identities to marketing. And so this is just kind of a nice way to understand of what that looks like in kitchen. And this is generally what we see, what we see recur. And SA 360 tackles this gap directly. Yeah, because what you're essentially doing, going back to the data side, as long as that integrity is there, and it's being piped into SA, the optimizer and algorithm behind it are still being utilized by Google, right, Microsoft algorithms. So you're still going against their identity graph at the auction. You're just bringing in known things that, that, that their graph doesn't understand. So things like, are they part of the birthday club? Or maybe they're part of the loyalty club and they, you know, buy Doritos at the, at the lounge every single day. And that's a really high signal for you. So you bid up a thousand percent. So you're bringing that unknown into the bid itself. Um, and that's all being facilitated via SA360 and the Google graphs. 
But you have to bring it in, like a person on some like data science team has to figure this out and then push that in, or is it do it like a click of a button right in the UI? Yeah, that's a good question because there's different flavors of it, you know. So there's uh, very nascent versions of this where you can do things almost like a customer match type of scenario, uh, where you can do a click of a button and it will export in like through offline conversions into to the floodlight to be able to optimize against. Uh, but again, you can. I think what people are starting to understand is with that kind of practice of like, I'm just going to upload store visits, uh, which is just an action. But maybe if we upload that against someone who else also knew uh, was part of the birthday club, they bought Doritos every single week, they went in the store but never visit, and they are in the shopping cart on site, but they never buy. That's a really high intent customer to pair with that, you know, that visit. That all needs to be done business side. I mean, so whether that's through the data science team or the BI team, um, that magic and work needs to be, needs to occur. Uh, generally, what we like to do at Adsware is to be able to help facilitate that. So if the teams aren't existing in the agency world or the business side world, oftentimes both, we can help be that bridge uh, to help bring those identities together and, and really incre increase the fidelity of that data um, because that's the most important part. Once it's actually in, SA360 can do its work. That's awesome. So do you need like analytics like so to make this all work? Like say I mean, we talked about like Adobe Analytics before and then people are switching to GA4 now with the sunset of uh, Universal Analytics. Like does it matter which analytics platform you use and you can use all this together or uh, do you need yeah. analytics in general or could you just have SA360 and make it work? So uh, yeah, I'll say this. I'll say this. You want you, you want to be looking at Clickstream which is, can be kind of passing through the media tools, and it doesn't really matter what one. You want on-site analytics if you have it, so whether that's GA um, or Adobe or any of the others, um, because that's another high, high intent signal that you can use. And then you want business side data, which can take the form of Salesforce records or profit data or really anything else that's important to you. Um, and so you want a mixture of all of those to be able to give a full idea of who this person is. And so more the better, on-site analytics is absolutely important. So I definitely recommend to source GCLIDs and signals from that um, to be able to help you know, facilitate the value of, of what you're feeding in the SA. I think it goes back to our marketing data warehouse discussion. So what you got to store in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The more data, the better, right? Yeah, well, just, so we said put everything in there. Yeah, pretty much. Stockpile. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Too fast. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is just kind of going off that last slide, but it's a great conversation point. But because because I think the idea historically, at least on the media side, was people are always looking for uh, more audiences or more reach or to come into a niche um, that no one else has really explored yet. Um, but the real kind of shift that's starting to occur is that, that it's not looking and searching for more. It's actually being more efficient and better with what you already know and have. And yeah. as the scenes deprecate, this is what we're going to see. And talking about all the tech that we just kind of went over, this is what we start to see. It, it doesn't actually create more opportunity. You're just getting better. The green fields actually open up the other way. And this is this was for predicted lifetime value, but there's a ton of other um, modeling that you could do to bring to your data in the SA360. This was PLTV, and what occurred was you're just being more efficient with your favorite and best known customers at, at the right time. That makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, that's awesome. I love efficiency. <laughs> there you go. Here's some bit efficiency. Oh man, yeah. Now we're getting so, so I threw this in here, not to get too search speaky on everybody, but I just wanted to be able to talk to to the audience and bring value here because at the end of the day in search, you're talking about a math equation, which is the bit itself. And so I just want to highlight it all together of SA360 essentially is operating off of this math equation at the end of the day and you want to be able to influence this with as much data points as you can as a business or agency to get that green field on that slide we just saw um, and so you can see that there's this uh, predicted conversion percent that is right from Google it's just off, based off the Google graph there is the target ROAS which is a setting that you can uh, do in SA360 so this is for the tactical practitioner to kind of toggle up and down and then there's this predicted value and that's what is not being seen or known. So this is what we hope to influence and bring into the equation, especially as the cookie starts to deprecate. You want to be able to bring in this uh, business known value to augment this, this math equation. 
And so um, you want, you, and you can upload that into SA 360 going back to everything we already said of what's the most valuable customers at the right time, right place? How do we segment those and what do they look like? And so as an exercise to brands and agencies, it's really a call to arms to start understanding like, is it someone who clicked on a Facebook ad? Is it someone who visited the site that bounced with a bounce rate of X percent? Um, and maybe you have a, like their loyalty club information that, and, and you know that they come in store on site every week. All, right, all of that together represents a true persona that you can attach a high value to as opposed to someone who maybe clicked on the Facebook ad and did a search, but isn't in the loyalty club. So you want to bid to them differently. So this is how you would be able to score it, is bringing that in so that way you don't waste money between the two valuations. Um, Super technical. I knew that one's super deep, especially for probably even uh, the most savvy search crowds, but this is essentially what we want to be able to do as the future kind of, kind of continues to go off of uh, into privacy realms and first party data. But basically what you're saying is you want to use as much as your historical data as possible and then match these new customers up to a ranking that they fit into. So that if you know if they're like in the number one ranking group, you're going to bid more. If they're in the lowest ranking group, you're not going to bid as much. Is that pretty much what you were saying? Yeah, exactly. And it can go even past that um, outside of like a search algorithm into creative. Right? Because you're going to start to learn and understand how your most valuable customers and just your brand story versus the ones who are maybe just finding your brand for the first time. And so your creative and your 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 relationship with your your most important customers are going to change because you can start talking with them differently and more appropriately rather than just having one message straight against everybody. You can actually augment creative against that, uh, which can go into other things besides search, like over into your display efforts or uh, your video efforts or even just kind of brand intelligence. Um, you start to really get these awesome insights that were never seen before because you're treating each client and customer differently and appropriately. Makes sense. Really personalized. Definitely really targeted. Make it personal. Very targeted. <laughs> Very targeted. Just wait till the AI stuff comes to this. I can wait. Generative. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's the big opportunity, right? Like talking about Gen AI coming in to help automate these types of things. So historically, all of these things that we're talking about are difficult, especially for agencies you know, who have to have a host of maybe 50, 100 clients at the time, and they have, all have their own valuations and understanding of the client. So I think the topic of uh, Gen AI um, and even automation of decision AI, like particular body time value and things of that nature, at scale is going to be the conversation uh, for the future. So well, just to book them on again. Yeah. Maybe in a year. I don't know how long. Well, maybe this stuff's happening so fast, but maybe we'll see. They'll probably just automatically book for us, right? As we think, think about so. it. As we saw last time. AI? Yeah. Well, it sounds like we need some machine learning for this to help us out. So we can get some predictive lifetime value with our machine learning experts and then correct from this. That's correct. That's correct. Tell our experts can be replaced by AI and just we ask it the question. We'll see. Anyways, <laughs> unifier. So what's this? Do we like making, we're unifiering something? Like yeah, I mean, so, you know, just kind of going back to the story of like, what what does your most valuable co customers look like, digitally and non-digitally? And a lot of times people will say, well, that includes social, right? And so um, how they're uh, integrating into Facebook or Instagram or really any of the other channels. Um, but historically it's been extremely difficult to be able to get that data usable in, in Google, right, and for search. And so the question has always been like, how can we make that easy um, so AdSwerve uh, has a proprietary tool called Unifier that is basically the click of a button to ingest uh, meta content into SA360 to be able to then use for uh, marketing purposes against the Google ecosystem or the GMP ecosystem in particular. Um, so it's first of its kind and uh, we're really excited to actually talk about it um, because it's 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 just now getting in the market um, and we've seen a lot of great benefits. There's a couple of case studies floating out there already. Uh, but it's a great way to be able to help bridge this idea of um, disparate identities against a single identity to, again, do what we're talking about, which is ultimately serve the customer and talk to them in appropriate ways. 
Cool. So this takes data from those platforms and you're going to be able to more effectively target based on all this data from all the different places. Just with this tool. Yeah. So for Unifier, it's essentially a gateway. Um, so a gateway that, that kind of helps allow these ecosystems, disparate ecosystems to be able to talk to each other. Um, cool. Right now, uh, Meta is obviously supported, but we're exploring other engines. And so we hope to expand those uh, identities of the gateway. But for right now, it's just Meta. Um, and the endpoint is going to be SA360. Do you think more people are searching on social sites? Um, not in the traditional sense of how I think a search expert would say for, for the search. I think what a lot of people are doing on social is for brand, like brand evangelists, product evangelists, and shopping. Um, but that's a crucial, important step if they're going to convert eventually over into the search realm. Uh, we generally see a lot of people uh, stepping in the path of conversion through social channels, but a lot of conversions still happen via search, whether that's either in-channel or on-site. Um, but we're starting to see a little bit of a shift, too, where people are starting to just convert more in the channel of social, so Instagram shopping, Facebook shopping. Um, so all of those are really important though, because again, if you just take it back to the end goal of trying to be the best marketer and storyteller to your most important clients responsibly, um, you need to be able to tell that story against things like the Google graph and these other identities. Um, and that's where Unifier really comes in. So answer your question, uh, not traditionally in the sense of searching, but traditionally in the sense of trying to find products and evangelist, evangelist against the products or information they're looking for. Yeah, I mean that's I've started to use it a little more because it's just it's becoming just more of a necessity to be on some of these Facebook pages and whatnot to whatever hobbies and interests or sports groups I'm in. And it's you know, it's it's just a constant feed. So I, I would like something a little more organized and summarized, but uh I guess we'll have to wait for AI on that one. But I've been searching more. That's why I asked the question, right? Like I'm searching these groups for specific things, whether it's like a recipe club or whatever it may be. Uh, but I've started to search myself within them, but I find it a little frustrating, to be honest. So I don't find them the greatest search engines at this point, meta. Yeah, I, I'd have to say the same. They probably aren't best for, again, traditional search, but I mean, the <laughs> consumption and them you can't deny, you know, from a consumer standpoint. So I think um, that's where we just want to play, and we want to we want to be there to be able to help facilitate the conversation of data, um, and that's where Unifier comes in. That's awesome! Can't wait. When's it coming out? It's already out. It just got launched this month, so you know, feel free to hit us up and let us know if you're interested. We'll be more than happy to get you on the tool. It's a really easy onboarding process, um, but yeah, it's available as of this month. Yeah, there oh, it is. Another fire. Oh, fire. Right. Yeah, we got dragon fire. Just look like uh, fires all over Alberta here. Oh yeah. Hopefully not. Look at that. It's like it's almost like I've I've talked about this before. You know, it's, it's just like right there. But anyway, dragon fire is um, kind of what I would call a supplementary product. It's still in beta right now, so it's not really publicly available. But we are accepting testers. If anybody would like uh, to test, feel free to reach out. Um, but essentially. The reason why I threw this in here was because we we're talking about data as it relates to media optimization. Facebook's an important part of that, Meta's an important part of that conversation, offline data, all of that other thing. Unifier can help uh, solve the data problem getting into the GMP ecosystem. Um, but what about everything else? So what about financially held data or um, loyalty club data and all these other things that are traditionally held business side and are very hard to actually get for a media person? Um, so we wanted to solve that problem and make it really easy for the technical people. This is essentially what we call an ETL or a reverse ETL. And essentially will help just get data from point A to point B in a very secure way. So media people, uh, you have to think of maybe someone trafficking for as for search. They, they don't have often the wherewithal to be able to have these conversations with brands uh, to say, hey, can you talk to your BI team? I need to get access to a GCP, a GCP bucket that you can drop a file at a normal cadence and then write a query for me to send it to this floodlight. Right? It's usually a very cumbersome conversation. Security usually comes into play. We've seen people trying to do this through email even and SFTP and it becomes very, very insecure. So we just wanted to solve that problem with the media mind, uh, with the media person in mind. And so Dragonfire is essentially that. It's a pipeline that gets data from point A to point B that can pass a SEC review, the highest level, 
and essentially it will make it very easy to click up a button. So it's in beta currently, uh, but it is available for testing. So if you have any clients out there world who are talking about first party data activation, but they don't know how to simply get it to you if you're an agency or a brand mind, let us know and we can facilitate that. Very cool. You can do zero party data too, right? You can use zero party data. You can use zero party data too. Yes. Data party. We learned about that, yes. Yeah, we um, talked about that previously. Yeah. So it's essentially this is this is just help enabling getting the data into uh the Google ecosystem and SA360 fits there. So like we talked about earlier, the more data to have you have, the more efficient your bids are gonna be. So this is good. this is really just helping our customers, uh, whomever, use this product with the click of a button, get data into this Google ecosystem, right? That's it. That's it. I will say, I will say, as we've been saying from minute you know, one on this so far, it's the fidelity of that data that's going to be most important. So although we can get it there for you and we can have it be optimized now, um, the joining of those identities and that work of scoring valuations and understanding that. Um, is the yeah. most crucial part, and that's where, uh, like, our data science team here at Adso can really help out. Um, so if those teams don't exist, business or agency side, let us know so we can help enable that for you at scale. But that is going to be the most crucial part of the fidelity of that data and the integrity of it coming in. Um, now that the 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 gateway and the pipeline is solved, solved problem, we want to also be able to help you with the integrity of your own data. So make sure to hit us up, and we can facilitate that. That's great. No engineering knowledge required, it says. I don't need to know anything. <laughs> That's awesome. To transfer the data, but right, 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 right. To, we need to do to something. To prep it up, yeah. yeah right. we, you have to do Until something. Until the AI does it. Until the AI does it, yeah. All right, I think we have some up to next, uh, next steps. Like, what do we, uh, we have a webinar coming up, or someone does, right? Yeah, I don't. Oh, do you, you don't? I'm not talking about <laughs> I think, Brent, do you? Yeah, I do. And so um, it's coming up soon. And you can scan that QR code, code right there to be able to join. And it will be hosted by myself, uh, my counterpart, who's a true master himself, Jeff Stewart, um, and then also Lauren Stone. So it should be a fun time. And we're going to be talking about all of this in greater depth. Uh, there will be a couple demos. So if you want to see underneath the hood for SA360, uh, we, if you don't know already, SA is going into a new version currently. So we'll be kind of lifting up the hood and demoing and showing some of these new features and what to watch out for. We're also going to be talking a, a lot about Unifier. We'll be lifting up the hood and doing a demo of that live. Um, and then obviously a lot of Q&A about anything regarding data and media and stuff like that to be able to activate upon. So join in. I think it's going to be an hour long. It should be a lot of fun. That sounds awesome. I'm signing up. Definitely. I always like to see under the hood. Like when I buy a car, it's the first thing I look at. <laughs> I don't care what color it is. You don't kick the tires first? It is. No. Okay. Those are all, that's just consumables in my opinion. But <laughs> it all works. Get the, yeah, the engine. <laughs> and then the next, another step here is the search. That's a good uh, I page. I went there. The search one? Yeah. It's not it cool explains stuff. a lot of stuff. It has a lot of good uh, case studies on uh, ROAS. ROAS. Okay. Yeah. Return on ad spend. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what that means. So if you want to get a if you want to get a good idea about how to increase your ROAS, you go to that page. Okay. Good examples. That's Excellent. right. Click on that page and you watch all your ROAS just go like that. <laughs> yeah. Up and to the right, right? Yes. So yeah. Tell the AI engine that you want to increase your ROAS and there it goes. Done. Easy. Boy, it's click of a button. Everything's coming down to one click. <laughs> click of a button. <laughs> Well, thank you, Brent, for joining us. This is uh, excellent. Um, I think hopefully Gord gets uh, up to fifty thousand in ad spend. Yeah. So he can, we can use SA three sixty with GreenSocks dot com. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe we'll one get day. We'll get there. Keep working yeah. on. Right on. Well, yeah. Thank you for having me. Uh, this was fantastic, and have a great day. Till next yeah. time. You too. See you later. Yeah.